Hello and welcome to Digital Learning Day 2021. My name is Debbie Brewer. I'm the Educational Services Manager at WOUB. A little bit of background on Digital Learning Day. Uh, each year, the eight Ohio PBS ed techs create a series of educational videos as part of Digital Learning Day. Uh, the video that we have for you today focuses on digital storytelling in your, in your curriculum. Uh, during this live premiere of this video, which will be February 25th at 9.30 a.m., uh, we'll have a live Q&A doc that you can go to and ask questions. Um, after the premiere, you can still view the doc, but you'll no longer be able to, to, uh, to ask and answer questions. But we will post some resources on that doc for you to go back to. Some of the things that we talk about in the video, uh, you can find this doc at this bit.ly address. Also, at some random point in the video, you're going to see a code pop up. It'll run, roll across the screen. You're going to want to record that code and then submit it for if you'd like to get a cert certificate of attendance for this uh, for this professional development. Uh, you can also you can find the directions to that on that Q and A doc as well, and that'll also be linked in the comments below as well. So, um, with all that said and all that out of the way, let's get started with our project. Uh, so today we're going to talk about um, a project that WAB did in collaboration with POV, an independent film so series which airs on PBS. Um, each of us today took different roles in this project, and my role was to facilitate the professional development around digital storytelling. To do that, we worked with ODE to do a virtual meetup, uh, which happened on January 20th, 2021. Um, I'll link in the comments below uh, the link to that if you'd like to, to go back to that as well to learn more in case there's other things you'd like to hear about than what we get to cover today. Um, I'm going to let each person describe their role in the project uh, during the video, but I just wanted to quickly say that we're going to put our contact information on a slide at the end so you can also reach back out to us that way. Okay, at this point I'm going to hand things off to WAB's engagement ma community engagement manager, Sherry Russo. Thank you, Debbie. So my role as community engagement manager at WOUB in this project was to connect the film that we selected from POV, which was called Portraits and Dreams, which was a film about um, Appalachian storytelling and uh, telling your own story by using media in a positive way. It was actually a, a story about a teacher who went, um, who went to Appalachian, Kentucky in the 1970s um, and worked with students to teach them about photography and the power of photography. And those students then took pictures that told the stories of their lives in a positive way. The film then went, took that teacher back recently to that town and connected with those students as adults to talk about the impact that that project had on their lives. And it was very inspirational about telling your own story and having the power to tell your own story, especially in the world we live in right now where media is king. So we used that film and we partnered with four different high schools in our region and we tried to go throughout the southeastern Ohio um, to show them the film and then get them to think about their own story and their own culture. And how we did that was we facilitated a discussion with the producer of the film, Robert, who you'll meet here in a moment. And we also asked them to pick community leaders that they wanted to hear from um, about their thoughts on the film and what they were proud of in their community so they could start to think about telling their own story. And then um, we paired them with Evan Shaw, who you'll also meet here in a second, who's a producer director at WOUB, to run workshops with them to teach them how to put together mini films that tell their own story. So all that being said, now I'll turn it over to Robert and Evan to talk about that part of the project. Yeah, thanks, Sherry. Uh, yeah, I'm Robert Salyer. I'm one of the producers of Portraits and Dreams, the documentary. Um, I grew up in the Appalachian Mountains uh, in southwestern Virginia. And um, in my early 20s, I was really lucky to uh, found uh, Apple Shop, A-P-P-A-L-S-H-O-P, -P -A uh, short for Appalachian Film Workshop. And um, what I learned at Apple Shop was to make films and uh, became part of the community media workshop there. Um, and really what Apple Shop was, was an opportunity for me to 
learn filmmaking and stay in the place where I was from, which I didn't think was possible. Um, in my early 20s, I was interested in documentary filmmaking and I just assumed that I would have to leave the mountains to do it. And so um, I spent around 15 years at Apple Shop. And um, one, of the, one of the projects that came about was Portraits and Dreams. So I knew Wendy Ewald, the photographer. Um, I had met her through her connections with Apple Shop. And uh, the book, Portraits and Dreams, was a photography book that came out in uh, 1985. And the book was always something that I was really, all, you know, really intrigued by. Um, it was photos by kids living in Eastern Kentucky, uh, taking photos uh, using Instamatic cameras of their lives, um, the way that their lives look to them and the way that their homes look to them. Um, and so that was from the late seventies, early eighties. And uh, Wendy put this book together. And so <clears throat> we decided at some point uh, let's find some of these students, uh, see where they are now and uh, what kind of an impact this um, workshop, what your class, what Wendy's class had on those kids. And it was really, really fulfilling because um, it was one of those situations where you didn't really have to push very hard to hear from these former students about what an impact that class had made on them. Um, I mean, growing up, uh, in 1970s Kentucky was um, a very, in a lot of ways, a, a dire situation. There, there, the extractive industry had very few regulations uh, on it. The um, strip mining laws were still um, being put together and uh, enforced. Um, and there was widespread spread poverty. Uh, and, and the difference being is that I think over time there have been photographers who wanted to come to Appalachia to take portraits of people in Appalachia and to highlight that poverty. And so part of what my whole um, career has been about has been to really reframe that narrative. And the way that you do that is that you allow the people who live there to tell their own stories. And so this film came about and we, I then uh, got a job at POV, which was, um, uh, would, what, that's where I work now. I'm an outreach specialist at POV. And the Our America Project, we chose five stations throughout Appalachia to use Portraits and Dreams um, through community engagement efforts and educational outreach to really expand on some of the themes of the film and also to, to hear from students now, today, about where, uh, how they see their home, how they see themselves. And so we're really lucky that WOUB was one of the partners for this project um, to do this work in the schools and really great for, you know, Sherry and Deb um, to have you on the project and also uh, to have Evan Shaw, who is a producer, film producer himself and uh, is from Southeast Ohio. And Evan did an amazing job of connecting with kids in these schools um, and it really changed uh, just like the, the whole impact of what this project, what we thought it could have uh, and made it into something that um, is, is sustainable, I feel. So Evan, uh, thanks and uh, thanks for all, all the work that you've done. But um, when, this, when this project first came, when you first began thinking about Our America and then this film, um, how, what, what were your thoughts? How did, you go, how did you think you would pull this off? Well, I wasn't sure we would pull it off, and I'm still not sure, you know, because it's, it's a big undertaking to do so, a project like this. But the idea of allowing people in underrepresented areas to tell their own stories has always resonated with me. Um, you know, as Robert mentioned earlier, we both grew up in Appalachia, me in southeastern Ohio, him down in Virginia. And um, so often in communities like ours, when you hear stories about where we're from, they're often from a negative perspective or a deficit approach. Um, I couldn't tell you how many times I've opened the New York Times or seen on the New York Times, you know, photographs from Appalachia of people in poverty on their front porches. And it's the same thing over and over. And while, yes, that is a very real thing and it's an important thing to, to talk about, there are a lot of other things uh, in our region that are positive that we need to also talk about. Um, and so having this opportunity to do this with students uh, in schools has really been incredible because they approach things from a totally different angle as we would ever expect to. 
Um, so it's been a really interesting project to give them the tools and the opportunity to tell their own story as opposed uh, to always coming from the outside. I, one, one thing I, I think about sometimes is that, you know, there are negative things that happen, but rarely do the mainstream media outlets talk about the causes behind mm -hmm. the, the, the negative effects. And it's, you know, uh, those people who live in the mountains, you know, they're lazy or, you know, there are all of these stories about, you know, why the poverty exists, but then there isn't this conversation about, well, what's, what, uh, what has happened in the region to cause the poverty, you know, um, coming to mind, Hillbilly Elegy being mm -hmm. a good example where they, there isn't talk about the, the, the causes. Yeah, absolutely. And when you look at how systemic those problems have been, that's why it's important for those of us who are living through those experiences or know people or our neighbors are living through those to talk about where this um, generational poverty or other issues have come from. It goes back hundreds of years to the time when someone's great, great, great grandfather signed away his timber rights. And then from there, all the resources were extracted and the money was taken away as well. So it is important to be able to do that. And what's been cool about this project is it's also teaching the kids that we work with about who they are because so often when all you're exposed to are negative stories about your home you tend to you tend to forget where not forget where you're from but you don't want to be outward about it necessarily you may want to you know hide that or shelter it a little bit so what we've done in these projects is give kids a chance to show the rest of the country and the state and their friends no I'm from southeastern Ohio I'm proud of it. I'm proud to be from Appalachian, Ohio. And here's something about where I'm from that you may not know about. Um, and so that's been really interesting to see them do those kinds of things. And at the same time, we're able to give them a little bit of a history lesson and a lesson in media literacy to understand how they, uh, our people have been portrayed over the generations. And so you, you started out with, there were, you would show, show the film in classes mm -hmm. and then, then you began work. So you, you wanna talk just through the process? Yeah, so the way we did it, um, we started out with a, uh, a screening of Portraits and Dreams. And on that screening, we had everyone in the class, all the students, as well as community leaders. And we showed that film so they had an idea of what other options, opportunities are out there for documentary, other ways to express who we are, and also to kind of inspire them about storytelling, about who local storytelling um, and um, place-based storytelling. And we also then had a panel discussion with those community leaders. Um, and the community leaders were everyone from presidents of banks to former teachers, principals, just people in the community who uh, everyone knows and who have made a difference. And the community leaders had a chance to speak with these classes about what they think is important for people to know about the community and what they love about it and why they choose to live there. And that really got the students thinking about uh, where they're from in a different way, thinking, you know, uh, really investigating what is it that makes our community special? What makes it unique? And what's been fascinating is to see, you know, we've we picked four schools and they're all within Southeastern Ohio and maybe only, you know, a half hour to an hour away from each other, but they're, all these communities are unique. And that's been interesting because we so often in any, you know, um, region kind of lump everybody into one group together. And so it's been nice to see how those schools are different and they're celebrating those differences and also celebrating how they're the same. Um, and the way we're going now is each student uh, or groups of students in the class are creating their own documentary film, um, you know, five-ish minutes long. We've been really flexible on the technical requirements and stuff like that because it's more important, I think, for the kids to tell their story. You know, we, we're going through lessons on editing and camera work and writing, a lot of writing work. Um, but the most important thing is that they learn to tell the story and they learn who they are, uh, or at least parts of who they are. And uh, the plan is when everyone is finished uh, in another month or two, we'll bring all these films together, have a small little film festival uh, kind of thing that will go online. We'll then send it out you know, on social media so that people around the state and the country have a chance to see real films from people who are actually living this you know, experience here in Southern Ohio. And again, as Robert and I both mentioned, the films come from a personal perspective from kids who look at things way different. You know, I'm not that old, but even these students look at, you know, the world a lot differently than I do. Uh, so that's been really interesting. Definitely. Yeah. And like you're saying, you know, the process, you know, we, we, we talk a lot at POV about media literacy and the importance mm -hmm. of media literacy. And, you know, when you're being bombarded with so many images about, 
you know, uh, who someone else may think you are. Um, and then when you're kind of, uh, those are like demystified a little bit. Yeah, for sure. And when you think about Appalachia and the way we're portrayed in the media, you know, think about positive Appalachian role models in national media and take as much time as you want. And if you can come up with one, I would love to hear it because there aren't many. Um, and so, for instance, on the Disney Channel right now, uh, there's a cartoon called Big City Greens, which follows a, a family of hillbillies from the mountains that move to the big city and they just can't quite figure out how to order a double soy mocha venti latte cappuccino whatever and they don't wear shoes and they don't have teeth and uh, they live in an old shack and those are the images that our kids are being exposed to you know my three-year-old I watched walked into the room the other day and he was watching it um, because it just happened to come on the tv and that's the images that my son is being exposed to of who who he is and you can take this same model, we're speaking about Appalachia in particular, but you could take this same model and bring it into inner city, basically any group of people around the country. Um, and it, it, it's the same, but different. You know, the circumstances might be different, but the media literacy of learning how you are portrayed, how your neighbors are portrayed and why it's important to understand uh, what perspective you're seeing is something that's important for students to learn at an early age so that as they get older, they can recognize what is true, what is fact, um, and uh, and they can work on telling their own stories. Yeah, exactly. And what you're saying about how this this can work in other communities, I mean, mm -hmm. in any place where, I mean, there are a lot of folks in a lot of communities who don't have power over their own stories mm -hmm. and over, you know, what the, what stories are being told about them. Um, and, and a lot of assumptions are being made about communities um, about what, what's best for them and without hearing from those communities. And so, yeah, I mean, I think the idea of like, we had a project called Our America, it's an ongoing project. And when you step back and think about Our America now, I mean, it's a very complicated, it's a very complicated idea. And um, it, there aren't any short answers to that question of, you know, what is, what is America now? You know, it's, um, and, and I think like the complicated aspects of what the, it makes this country great, you know, and, but in terms of like the youth, I mean, I know you've been reaching out to, you know, you're looking at to expand this project to Cincinnati, um, you know, and so I feel like that there's so much potential of just, you know, really handing over the power a little bit um, and, and, you know, providing tools to young people and saying, hey, you know, we we do want to hear your story, and we we care about what you have, what your experiences are. Absolutely, and it's it's empowering the students to tell their own story. Um, it's also, you know, it's something that can be done in um, cultural exchange type programs. Uh, as Robert mentioned, you know, we're hoping to to work with schools in other communities across the state. And just off the top of my head, we could have students from rural southeastern Ohio working on documentary films with students from, you know, Columbus, Cleveland, Cincinnati, you know, more urban areas and working on documentary films about their communities and how they're um, different, but also the same and how they may face similar problems, but they approach them differently. The possibilities are endless. And when you look at this cultural exchange idea through storytelling, through youth-based media storytelling, it's incredible and it has power because that's what you know, that's what it's all about right now is reaching out and learning about what is America? Who are we? Not even what is America, what is Ohio? You know, uh, Ohio is a very diverse state. And to give kids an opportunity to, A, take power over their own story, but also learn about other cultures as well. Um, you, it, it's an incredible experience for them. And we talk about documentary film because that's the way we're doing it. And Robert and I are both film producers, but you could do this with any kind of art. You could do it with any kind of uh, storytelling. You could do uh, writing workshops. You could do poems. You could do paintings. You could do photography. It really is endless. The, the key is finding ways to represent who you are and to find that authentic voice um, and to give them the platform as well. And that's what's been cool about partnering with POV and with WOUB is because we have the platform at our station to get their films out to a wider audience. Uh, than they would be if they were just a class project. And this process has lasted, it's been several months of doing this. This is not, you know, a two or three week thing. You could condense it, of course, but we've chosen since we're in the middle of a pandemic, you know, to have more Zoom meetings. And we work with students um, once a week usually or every other week 
where myself and a couple of my graduate students work with them to work on their scripts and develop their stories and to really take the time to think of it. And it's been amazing to see how the kids have changed their perception of who they are from the very beginning to now. When we first started this project, we would ask the question, how many of you identify as being Appalachian? And nobody raised their hand. They never even thought about it. But now I got a script today from a student who it's a, it's a work of art talking about who he is and what makes him proud of and how he moved to the region and how much he loves it now compared to where he used to live and things like that. And I think it really has made a difference in his perception of who he is. He is proud to be where he's from. He is very proud of it. And when you read his script, it shows. Um, and so that model could be applied to any high school, middle school, elementary school. The idea is to start uh, giving these opportunities you know, as soon as possible. And I think that that will go a long way in how we think about ourselves in the next generations. And the technology side of it too, it's nice because we're a television station and we have the experience, we have equipment that we can loan to the students and things like that. But in the middle of COVID, we quickly realized that that was gonna make things very difficult. So the technology requirements have been very limited uh, and very you know, minor that the students have needed. Most students are gonna have a cell phone that can take video. And is it going to take the most beautiful video you've ever seen? No. Is it going to take something that's good enough? Absolutely. Because again, what we're focused on is the story. And if they want to become the next Steven Spielberg later in their career, fantastic. Have at it. This will get them started. But what we've used, a lot of students are shooting on their cell phones. Some schools had cameras that they were able to use. They are editing on free software, um, DaVinci Resolve, which is a fairly high level software. There's a free version of that. Um, there's also a program called Adobe Premiere Rush, which if you have the Creative Cloud at your school, that comes with that. And you can also get that on your phone for fairly inexpensively. And it's simple enough that, well, it doesn't even need to be simple because these students, as most teachers know, they hop on a computer and they're good to go. I really encourage teachers to not be intimidated by the technology side of it because it can literally be done with a cell phone now. Focus on the stories. You know, one of the best schools we're working with, we're working with their English class. And these are, you know, they're uh, college and AP level English because these students are incredible writers already. We're just giving them a few technical tools and they're focusing on their stories. And uh, that's really made it um, work out pretty well. So you don't need a whole lot of equipment or fancy equipment. You could literally get it done with what's in your pocket already and what the students have at home. Yeah, and that, that speaks to, you know, with this film, <clears throat> you know, I see the film as a way to get in those classrooms, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, and then from there, uh, it can become, uh, it can just be transformed in, in, into anything that the students want to do. So, uh. so thanks everyone for coming and thanks for Robert and, and Evan and Sherry for joining on the project. We really did have a good time doing it. Uh, and we're going to like, so we're going to include the links for you for lots of different things that you might be interested in. Um, we'll also have, have our contact information so you can reach out to WOUB and we can give you any other information that you're interested in. And, uh, Thanks for joining us for our Digital Learning Day 2021.